Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta and today we focus on the world's most commonly eaten staple that is wheat. Prices are at boiling point in the grain space as macro factors have begun to choke supply in the face of rising demand. Russia's withdrawal from the Black Sea grain deal is the biggest of these macro changes as a pathway for 9.5 million tons of grains exported from July is no longer safe. Remember, following its invasion of Ukraine, Russia's navy imposed a blockade on Ukraine's Black Sea ports, trapping about 20 million tons of grain. But in July, a deal between Ukraine and Russia was brokered by Turkey and the United Nations, agreeing to resume grain exports through the Black Sea ports. However, President Putin said that the deal was being suspended, citing a massive drone attack through a safety corridor in the Black Sea that alleged Kawaii was responsible for. This move effectively risks wheat supply from the world's breadbasket, which has inevitably sent prices soaring world over. Things are equally unstable back home in India, where March's heat wave sent prices 30% higher, with experts expecting 3-5% to of a rise to follow from here too. So what lies in store for the grain space and can the government help soften prices? To take this discussion forward, I am now joined by Carlos Mira, who is Senior Commodity Analyst at Rabobank, and Sumit Gupta, who is CEO of McDonald Pell's Global Commodities. We also are joined by Ajay Goyal, who is uh, from uh, Shivaji Roller Flour Mills. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us. And it really is about the latest trigger coming in from Russia, which has withdrawn from the Black Sea Pact. How do you see Carlos, it impacting the markets. We have seen a knee-jerk reaction, yes. But following that, how, where do you see the markets headed now? Well, we saw the 5% increase in the market yesterday. Um, to be honest, I think that was a relatively measured uh, market reaction. Um, and, and we have to understand that, you know, yes, we were expecting this deal to come to, to the end, but it was only expected to last for another three weeks mm. and a little bit more. So, um, it, it, there was already an expectation in the market that this deal was going to be cancelled. That's why the market reaction uh, following the cancellation was not that sharp. Mm. Uh, going forward, uh, we do expect to see increasing exports uh, out of Russia. Russia has had a massive uh, crop um, in this season, so, so it could you know, export increasing volumes. We were disappointing with the Russian exports in the last three months, but actually in October, uh, exports started to go up out of Russia. Um, and in Ukraine, where we will expect to see more exports out of the ports on the Danube, which are in almost immediately EU waters, and also via land towards EU countries. Uh, in terms of pricing, I think wheat prices will still relatively elevated, but I wouldn't expect panic on the back of uh, this cancellation because, as I said, to some extent, it was already expected. Mm -hmm. Now, looking uh, to the next season, things might look a little bit trickier there because we have quite a bit of the stocking in exporting countries, with the exception of Ukraine and Russia, in the current season. And next season, we may have a big drop in Russia. Russia might not produce another record crop. Mm. Uh, therefore, availability will continue to be tight more than one year away from now. All right. So the concerns just about continue. If not for this season, then the next as well. Ajay, what's your sense? How do you look at the overall global trade impact on wheat and other grains as well? So I think this... Uh... Uh, you know, war uh, effects uh, will continue until there is total peace. You know, it's uh, we cannot be expecting a, a total normal resumption, I guess, uh, until there is some resolution to this uh, ongoing crisis. So until then, uh, there will be volatility in the global markets because, you know, most of the wheat is locked in Ukraine and uh, Russia. And there has to be a way out of that wheat peacefully. Until then, there, uh, the markets are going to witness a huge deal of uh, volatility, in my opinion. Oh, well, yes. So that's what our experts are telling us, that the uncertainties will continue. Sumit, what's your sense? What is the kind of availability and demand scenario that you guys are working with? Yeah. Hi, Manisha. First, thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, it's a very important question, as you have highlighted on the wheat, uh, uh, pricing wheat uh, supply demand situation at the moment, because uh, we are getting to planting season in uh, Russia, Ukraine, and Europe at the moment. And the way Russian Ukraine uh, grain deal has uh, been called off, it is going to have a negative impact for the planting for the coming year. 
which is going to keep prices high for wheat, not only for this year, but for the years to come. Because all these supply demand imbalances take multiple years to correct. It's not one year phenomena. The problem comes, you plug in supply and, uh, and uh, the problem is solved. No. We are going to have the supply demand imbalances for years to come. Russia, Ukraine contribute approximately 30% of the total global trade flow. And this trade flow at the moment is impacted. It is raining a lot in Australia. It's not raining in Argentina. So we, uh, we do have global problem on the wheat supply side at the moment. Demand is quite robust. Uh, all the socialist countries specifically are buying a lot more wheat than they normally do because they need security back home. And that is, uh, that is leading to a robust demand. And that is where we have seen uh, prices globally is around 50% higher than same time last year. Last year, FOB was around $300, uh, $245. Equivalent Black Sea, it is approximately $320, $330 FOB equivalent at the moment. And uh, against that, prices in India has increased relatively at a lesser pace. Government of India has done a great job. Thank you. Clearly. Carlos, how would you look at the prices going forward? I mean, we've seen all-time highs in this year and then, of course, some correction and then a rebound yet again. It's been volatile at best. What is your sense moving forward from here for prices if we were to look at a quarter or a couple of quarters ahead? Well, I certainly don't expect prices to go back to the record levels. I mean, let's remember that those record levels were reached when the market was fearing that we were going to have sanctions on Russia, and also that Russia could occupy the whole of Ukraine and destroy, destroy all of Ukrainian agriculture. Now, that doesn't look to be the case uh, on, on, on either side. So I think price will stay well above cost of production. They will probably go back to $9 per bushel, um, but they spend to be relatively at that level, so well, well above cost of production uh, in at least the next 12 months. And that's that's because what I said, you know, we still expect a, a deficit. We have a deficit this season globally, especially outside of Russia and Ukraine. And next season looks like it's going to be the same case. All right. Let's also look at, look at the Indian impact from the Black Sea uh, uh, development that we've seen. And Ajay, what's your sense? How do you look at the Indian prices reacting to this, even if it is sentimental? Yeah, so India is totally insulated from all global things as long as, you know, there's a 40% import duty and there is a, a ban on exports. So I do not see any, for the next six months, at least until the new crop, any major policy re reversal by the government. And hence, I do not see anything impacting any global event per se impacting Indian wheat uh, uh, for the moment because uh, it's a five-month play left out for Indian wheat. Clearly that. Sumit, how would you look at that? Because uh, as I just pointing out, we are totally isolated, insulated from this whole thing because we are neither exporting, that is what the government banned, and imports clearly at 40% of an import duty seem like wouldn't happen really. Uh, Manisha, uh, I would will, I will like to connect to, we are neither isolated nor insulated at the moment okay. from the big prices, uh, what is happening globally. Uh, because uh, if you if you look at in the context of what government of India holds, government of India holds approximately 24 million tons of less wheat mm. uh, this year on 1st of October compared with 1st of October 2021. Government of India holds 4 to 5 million tons of rice equivalent less than same time equivalent last year. So government of India is having a stock problem at hand. And whenever you have stock problem at hand and you have a population of 1.35 billion people, you, you cannot say it short. You have to look for the alternate sources to augment supply. And for that, government of India has a couple of tools. This year, they have given a signal by increasing MSP of wheat and chana by 100 rupees, which is equal. But in percentage term, wheat prices have increased, have been, MSP has been increased significantly higher than chana. So government of India wants farmer to move towards wheat from chickpeas. Government of India is not going to take any policy action till the time we cross the planting season because government of India wants to give the uh, signal to farmer that you are going to get good prices. But do you think or can we think that government of India can augment uh, their supplies in the coming uh, years uh, through the procurement? Answer is no. Because we have a structural problem on hand. Mm. So the question is not when government of India is going to uh, allow the imports. 
but it is the what quantum is going to come in. And and looking at the current situation where there is a tight demand and supply situation across the world, it is paramount for government of India that sooner they do it, better it is because. In this kind of situation, if we kick the problem down the road, it only uh, it grows in size. It doesn't solve itself. Mm. So being such a big consumer, we have a big problem on hand. Clearly that. And the other thing really is not just about the wheat, which is of course the golden grain as we call it, but it also is the price rise across value chain as we have seen. So wheat as it is consumed in sense of flour there, but when you look at uh, bread and biscuits and pasta and penne, I mean everything seems to have seen a price rise. Ajay, this question is to you. Have you seen price rise across value chain and by how much? I think, you know, uh, most, uh, uh, you know, finished product uh, manufacturers like biscuit, pasta, etc. have been holding on to their price rise and uh, now the festival season is behind us and the real lean season is there and wheat prices are really shot up like anything. So I do think that there will be a real price hike uh, in these products uh, very soon. All right. So while the Indian festival season may be behind us, but the international festival season really is coming in. And what is going to be the impact of that is what we'll discuss with Carlos. But after this very short break, don't go anywhere. The discussion continues on the other side. आग को फैलने से रोकना मुश्किल है पर नामुमकिन नहीं अब फायरवॉल टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ सेंचुरी प्लाई क्लब प्राइम आग से बचाए फ्रॉम डेविड टू गुलायब फ्रॉम द स्मॉलेस्ट बिजनेस वेंचर्स टू मल्टी मिलियन डॉलर ग्लोबल कॉर्पोरेशंस मीट द मूवर्स एंड शेकर्स टुडेज न्यूज मेकर्स एंड टुमारोज लीडर्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट मेक्स मार्केट मूव how companies make quantum leaps and how giant corporations stay ahead. Get the biggest business stories of the day, power-packed into 30 minutes on Business 360 at these times. Co-powered by Van Heusen Move Labs. Now, see, the whole mohalle of Bijli is in the middle of the mohalle of Saksena Ji's mohalle of Bijli. सिग्नेचर ग्लोबल सिटी एक दुनिया वो थी और एक दुनिया ये गली मोहल्ले की चिक चिक से दूर दिल के पास सूरज की अंगड़ाई तभी खुलती है जब आपके यहां सुबह की पहली चाय बनती है इसीलिए इंडिपेंडेंट फ्लोर्स फॉर द इंडिपेंडेंट यू सिग्नेचर ग्लोबल सिटी DCX Systems Limited, among the leading Indian manufacturers of electronic subsystems and cable harnesses in the defense and aerospace sector, now makes an initial public offering of equity shares. The 100% book built offer being offered in a price band of 197 to 207 rupees per equity share opens October 31st and closes November 2nd, 2022. For risk factors and other details, refer to the Red Herring Prospectus. Welcome back. You're watching Commodity Champions and we have our guest with us. Uh, and as you were pointing out, uh, Ajay, that uh, the increase in commodity price rise has led to a value chain price rise too. What is your sense on the kind of wheat price rise that we have seen and how much and how long before we see the rise in product prices? So I think uh, wheat products uh, is a little delayed pass through. So, you know, things like flour, atta, within a month uh, or 15, 20 days, they do react. And as far as biscuits and things like that are concerned, there are other commodities that get into it, like, you know, fat and sugar. And so they take a very balanced approach and uh, uh, they mend their prices on the basis of other uh, commodity, uh, commodities that they are consuming. Mm. Ajay, you also mentioned that we've seen 25 to 30 percent of an increase in wheat prices already. How much of a further price rise are we expecting from these current levels? So I think we are at the top end of this, uh, uh, you know, price cycle. 
and uh, not more than three to five percent uh, uh, should be seen if government really plays its cards well and makes the right announcements and delivers uh, as per its intention in the next two three months that's what the market is waiting for the more delayed the government announcements on OMSs and open sale uh, the more uh, you know the price rise will continue and that is the only thing that can currently cool off the run in the markets i would say all right. Carlos, what's your sense? I still want to ask about the value chain uh, here. And while the wheat prices have been surging, what has been the case for uh, bread, biscuit and various other products that the international markets consume? What kind of a price rise have we seen there? Has that impacted the demand in any sense? And what kind of a further price rise are we reading for ourselves? Well, it's very difficult to be... Uh very general about rice prices um, for those products because they change country by country, it, mm. everything is different, but we've seen significant price rises. Um, roughly speaking, the cost of wheat is anything between uh, five, 10 percent of the cost of a loaf of bread, but it varies massively. It's not the same a premium loaf of bread in central London than in Egypt. So uh, it's very hard to track across the globe, but generally speaking, yes, those price increases have been passing, been passed on to the consumers so far. However, I will expect that in a recessionary environment, that's going to become much more difficult. Uh, so food processors will find it much more difficult to convince supermarkets to, to push uh, increasing costs to the consumers. Mm. Carlos, as Ajay was pointing out, that the Indian government will perhaps need to do something in the next two or three months to ensure that there is affordability and availability. What is your sense in the global markets on what other uh, governments, countries will perhaps need to do to ensure that there is availability? Well, unfortunately, um, over the last uh, 12 months, but especially in the last 10 or so, we've seen many countries increasing export taxes, those exporting countries that export uh, food. In, in some cases, they have been increasing export taxes. Um, it, it was the case of Russia before they had a, a record crop. Um, it was a case of um, Indonesia when they banned actually exports of palm oil. Uh, and a few other countries, Algeria, for example, banning exports of food, um, etc. So, So uh, I think, you know, if I don't think it's likely that we're going to see another 12 months of panic, but I think we're likely to see one or two more examples of countries trying to protect the domestic market, trying to contain food price inflation inside the country uh, in detriment of food price inflation e elsewhere. Um, hopefully, we already passed you know, the, the peak of panic in the market, but I think we, we will see still a few other cases. All right. So, with what's your sense uh, for the Indian markets itself, uh, because the kind of export uh, benefit that India was getting and the lower crop that we saw because of March heat wave, a lot of crop, a lot of wheat went to private players, not so much to the government. And there is a bit of a concern here right now. How would you look at the Indian market situation? And is it a cause for worry? Would you be concerned? Yeah, I would like to highlight a uh, few key uh, critical points. Number one. Government of India has a stock of 22.5 million tons. That's on 1st of October. And with a run rate of approximately 2 million tons going for the next six months, Government of India will have less than 10 million tons of stock with them on 1st of April. What does it mean? It means Government of India on 1st of April will be totally dependent on the new crop planting, crop development, and the production. So a country of 1.35 billion people okay, cannot be completely dependent on the crop cycle because weather is uncertain, global availability is not that easy. So we, we are in a tough position and that is where uncertainty always lead to reaction from the prices side. And that is where we are witnessing in the wheat markets uh, where prices are reacting to tight supply and demand situation. Number two, our domestic demand is expanding because of uh, consumption, income increase, urbanization, all the major reasons. And as people move from rural part of the country to urban part of the country, wheat consumption goes up. So this dislocation of supply and demand is not for a year. We are going to face tight wheat SND for years to come, and it is going to keep prices volatile. We have a lot of sporting events world over in months to come. We have general election in 2024. We have many elections in country in 2023. So, uh, 
wheat as you have mentioned is a golden grain it is a wheat wheat is consumed by maximum number of uh, consumers in the country so it is going to be a very tight rope and as ajay ji has mentioned government will need to make announcements in a timely manner to keep uh, the volatility and price escalation in check Mm. Ajay, how do you look at uh, the import duty cut then? I mean, at, at at 40% currently, how much, how soon, what impact are you expecting? Uh, so, I really don't think, uh, you know, there will be real imports uh, happening, but I think uh, if the government is wise enough and it's able to reduce the duty down to a zero, at least it will open up another gate, uh, you know, and uh, we won't see a uh run up continuing so that should pull off sentimentally the markets at least in south india because uh, you know not before january the first vessel can really really come into south india from australia or any other part but i think government should act fast and make some announcements or clarify its position whether it might look at uh, private imports uh, in this financial year or no all right so the import perhaps will come to private uh, companies yet again and at least a sentiment change is what it could bring into the indian markets uh, carlos what what are you expecting now globally when we look at uh, wheat uh, uh, australia is one to watch out for argentina as you said russia has a good crop as of now at least and there is some wheat into the international markets going forward what would what would you see as a big opportunity or a challenge when it comes to wheat trade globally well, of course, we need to replace wheat in the countries that will normally import from Ukraine. So these are uh, countries, Northern Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, even uh, like Bangladesh and some of the Eastern countries, and, and of course, Turkey. Now, much of those countries could you, you know, switch to Russian wheat. Yes, but uh, we will need also wheat uh, from other countries. Now, as you mentioned, Australia, is producing a third consecutive bumper crop, so production there is very, very good. Normally, La Nina conditions benefit Australian rainfall, therefore more wheat production, but exports out of Australia are maximized already. So Australia ca cannot at the moment export as much as uh, um, uh, it, it, there is availability okay. of wheat in the country. Mm. Um, Argentina, unfortunately, is down. La Nina has been affecting Argentina, so the crop there is, is um, a disaster. And then um, we, we need to look at the next year's uh, Northern Hemisphere crops. Uh, as, as I mentioned, Russia might see a big fall in production back mm. to average levels. Uh, unfortunately, in Ukraine, we are looking at a 30% area reduction and a reduction of yield. So as the situation stands today, we are going to see the destruction of Ukrainian agriculture. And then the EU might be, uh, if plantings have been relatively good, however, in the US, they are planting in drought conditions. Okay. So a lot of uh, uh, concerns there. I think um, for some countries that might produce under normal conditions, this market is great and they, they are producing well above cost of production. So hopefully, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully the EU will recover, the EU production will recover okay. to normal levels. And of course the EU is the largest, as a block, is the largest producer of wheat in the mm -hmm. world. So mm -hmm. hopefully the EU production can, can help save the day in the next season. All right, there's a long list of concerns and some opportunities and hopes as well. But as said by our experts that uh, just about 3 to 5% of gain is what we can see in prices. I'm at the last 30 seconds, Sumit, but I want to have your last word in. What is your sense on the prices moving forward from here? Not record highs, as Carlos says, but how much? India, as you have mentioned in your earlier question, uh, government, thanks to the step on 13th of May, which government of India took, uh, we are insulated from the at least from the price escalation side from the global market point of view. Okay. But uh, we have to see that we are dependent on weather, hmm. planting season, fertilizer availability, uh, no heat in February and March, so that our yield stays good, availability of good alternate grains. Because what we have seen in Paddy, there is a drop in production in UP, Bihar, uh, West Bengal, and this is the same pocket where uh, I will say the poorest or uh, the people with the least income stays in the country. Right. And this is where our wheat is also going to come. And so uh, we are going to have tight supply and demand situation ahead of uh, us in uh, months to come. Okay. And I am in the camp of higher price volatility and potential price escalation if there is no OMSS and import uh, 
uh, allowance from government of India, I believe uh, wheat prices will continue to go up. And if you want to okay. have a number, I will say maybe 10% from here in next uh, three months. All right, that does not sound good at all. So the golden grain could actually get more expensive and that doesn't look sound so good, especially for a country like India where we have huge population and a huge demand for wheat as well. But thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us and putting a light on all of those concerns, challenges and some uh, positives as well. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.